Coming to you from the Windy City. Welcome to Let's Talk Shop, a podcast about all things cloud and enterprise tech. Listen to insights and guest interviews with IT thought leaders and professionals. Now, here's your host, Elias Welcome Kineser. back, everyone, to another episode of Let's Talk Shop. My guest today is an interesting guest. We've been on a little bit of a, a security and identity streak, but it's all the hype these days. It's all the conversations. So it is my great pleasure to welcome Chase Dealing, Principal Strategist at Jump Cloud. Chase, it's great to have you. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to dive into some of these topics today. Oh, I'm excited as well. You know, the identity and, and the security conversation is always interesting. And, you know, coming from a cloud perspective, uh, it's going to be fun. So let's start first with um, a little bit of an introduction. So for those folks that maybe aren't familiar with Jump Cloud, they don't know what Jump Cloud is or the open directory platform, give me a little bit of a history on, on the company and on uh, the open directory platform. Yeah, absolutely. So Jump Cloud is, I'd say, first, just an amazing organization company, you know, filled with hundreds of people worldwide. We're all working on, you know, how we can better perfect and make the lives of, you know, IT and security admins a little bit easier. Um, and so we're supporting over 200,000 organizations across the globe, you know, typically within the small, medium enterprise is, is where we sit a lot and kind of help the customer base. And then the open directory platform is, you know, our, our current best solution and kind of how we can bring all those different technologies into one pane of glass. So you're leveraging multiple different areas from identity and access management, device management, SSO, MFA, you know, LDAP, Radius, like all of those other different pieces into one platform to help provide that for folks and making sure that we continue to modernize how people think of a directory and how they think about identity um, in today's age, right? And as it relates to security and making sure that you can have access to, to what you need to get your job done. So uh, that's fascinating. I mean, Jump Cloud has chosen to get into a space that's historically been dominated by, by Microsoft and Active Directory. I mean, on-premises Active Directory, I mean, heck, it's what, over 90% probably adoption. Yeah. So give me a little bit of the, the origin story. Why this space? What is Jump Cloud doing different? How are you even dis displacing Active Directory? I'm, I'm super curious. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, Active Directory, it, it, it's everywhere. Everyone's kind of grew up on that. It's been a technology that's been around for decades and decades and decades. And I think that inherently also presents itself as a security risk, right? Because now everyone knows that you're also relying on the same piece of technology to authenticate into you know, the corporate crown jewels, if you will, kind of where people are, are getting their work done, where modern IP now exists. Um, and the origin story is actually pretty interesting. So the Jump Cloud as an organization, we didn't we didn't start out as a directory, actually started out as, you know, Linux and device management, kind of server orchestration and other pieces. And so as the founders were going through this, uh, Rajat Bhargava, as well as Greg Keller, building this tool set, they said, hey, you know, they're getting feedback from folks is like, it doesn't really quite solve, you know, what we're doing for Linux, but hey, what you built, that actually negates the fact that we like need to hook it up to AD. Like, so we're able to do all these great things without having an AD presence there. And that got the founders thinking, especially Raj, who has had multiple exits before. And this came from a previous company where he was still within Still Secure, where it, it's a huge friction point. And a lot of organizations, when they're developing new let's say, you know, technologies, applications, whatever that might be to move the organization forward, they have to hook up into AD and it creates this huge friction point for other technologies. And so it's like, well, what if we, what if we didn't, right? What if we, there was a Microsoft list world where you could open up that directory and making sure that you kind of go beyond those bounds, especially just kind of a physical perimeter and allow access into all those different pieces. And so that was kind of, you know, Back in startup land, you know, one of the famous pivots that we've had in, in launch directory as a service. And now over the last, you know, eight, nine years, we've just been building on that notion of what could a modern directory truly do. And so that's much more than just identities and access, but making sure that you can carry that identity across to authenticate into networks, get into SSO, making sure that it's the same one that's prompting you for MFA, all of those different areas where now you have that consolidated identity and you're not forced within you know, this one security perimeter that a lot of folks have put up. And it helps allow people to adopt even further technologies, right? And go for better automations, better efficiencies and other pieces. So you're not relying or kind of being dependent on this one 
server that's hanging out in the back closet that most folks, when you're thinking about it, except for IT professionals, you know, are unaware of, right? And they, they basically just see it that every 30, 60 days when they're changing their password, that's about it. So uh, I'm, I'm fascinated. So let me ask you a couple of questions here. So which aspects of Active Directory can you replace? Can you replace the whole thing? Like, will it, can you replace domain services? Does it negate the need for a domain controller? So I don't have to deal with FISMO roles anymore. What about group policy? All of these things, do they have an equivalent or a more modernized way of doing it? Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess I will say it's like, there's so much within an Active Directory environment, especially when you're thinking about larger and larger organizations that have, you know, might have multiple ADs or a forest of it, whatever that might be. But for a lot of small and medium enterprise companies, they don't need it, right? And the reason why they're able to do that is, yes, we can actually manage those identities, that um, those devices as they're coming through, running instead of, you know, kind of GPOs, we have very similar kind of local policies that you can enact across machines. But we make it a lot easier because we're actually um, device agnostic. So now you can actually apply those policies, whether it be, you know, running full disk encryption or, you know, have you, you know, have BitLocker over here, but also File Vault across right. Mac, Windows, Linux, other Apple devices, other pieces. And that's really helpful for organizations as they grow because a lot of organizations now, they, they're operating in heterogeneous environments where they want to at least allow some device choice, whether you know it's the marketing team and sales that wants the MacBooks or it's the finance team that wants the Windows books or other areas where within that organization. And by able to leverage all those different layers, you can now have that, that same setup, right? When you're thinking about managing identities as you would from an IT admin, but then also doing it at scale. You're not really running into this issue of, well, I got to make sure I'm right in the right AD or this kind of person's over here in this group. You know, we, we have that much larger aggregate view. And it's not to say that, you know, for those folks too, because it is a journey, right? As you're sure. thinking about adopting IT practices in other areas, kind of having that shift forward is, you know, we integrate with Active Directory as well, right? And so there's multiple different ways for you to leverage and kind of update or kind of you know, bring your identity and security awareness kind of up to bear where we are in 2023. So help me understand a little bit about maybe some of the SaaS integrations, especially with Microsoft products. You mentioned it integrates with Active Directory. I'm assuming that's enterprise Active Directory on-premises. But what about something like uh, Microsoft 365 or Office mm -hmm. 365? Would you, how would that work? Would it integrate directly natively? Would that integrate to Azure Active Directory? So does Active Directory still need to be in the in the middle, I guess, is my question. It doesn't need to be in the middle. You, you can have it in the middle. You, you know, I like to say you can you can design your own authentication party that way. Um, but for customers that are looking to adopt it, especially either brand new or, or existing or kind of whatever that might be, we hook into Microsoft 365. So you'd say, hey, I'm actually going to grab that identity. We're going to bring it into Jump Cloud. And then Jump Cloud will be kind of the authority around that. And so that way, it's really helpful for an onboarding and offboarding scenario as well. When you say, hey, we already have this person, that, but they might be moving around. Um, we want to update that status or they're leaving the organization. Great. Now I can actually do that. So that way, email Microsoft 365, all those different assets, including device and network access and all those other areas are all tied in together. And we do the same for Google workspaces as well. And then we actually have several different integrations with other HRS providers. Because when you think about it, most people, that's kind of where we have, you know, our notion of, of an identity. It's like, I got an email address that like I exist. I'm, I'm a real employee now. Really, the origin story of their identity starts much further down the line, whether it could be applicant tracking systems, but typically in HR and say, all right, now this person, Chase, is now an employee. Now we'll start the provisioning process to everything else. But what we can do is actually integrate with those providers and pull that identity in. So everything, even from you know day one to last day, is all integrated into all those different resources that you need. That's fascinating. So you're telling me that I can get to a point where I don't need a domain anymore and I could just leverage all of this as a service, including logging into the computer, the, to the PC or Mac or Linux. That same login can be used to configure Outlook and any of the other apps, correct? Yeah, so you can bring it all in. And so we manage and integrate with all of those different different pieces. But at the core identity, you know, you're know, you able to move off of a domain, right? And, and we help a lot of customers do that, whether, you know, they're updating their policies. And, and, you know, a lot of people saw this too, running through kind of the fully remote days of the pandemic, where it's like, oh my goodness, you know, I can't get into this office, or now I have to do all this VPN, 
kind of shenanigans to making sure that I can auth into what those areas are. And so with Jump Cloud, we kind of negate that fact. And you don't need to have that anymore because it's, it's cloud-based. You're able to access it from anywhere. And so it truly allows people to set themselves up for success wherever the organization might be or kind of grows into over time and, and adopt whatever technologies they might need to, to have on those devices to make it work. I'm going to ask you an impossible question to answer, <laughs> but I, I have to ask. Yeah. Um, it feels like Microsoft is missing the boat. Like they're kind of giving up on a space that historically they've dominated. I mean, again, we talk about Active Directory and it's got a very big dominance on premises, at least. They're trying to do that with Azure Active Directory and a bunch mm -hmm. of other tools and capabilities that they have. But it doesn't feel like they've completely made that tr modernized, transformative effort. But I'm curious, and I know you're a competitor, but I'm still going to ask, why do you think that's the case? It's interesting. Is it too hard for them to, to integrate all these things, to modernize them? Or what's your take on it? My, my opinion is that it, it comes down to preference. When you're thinking about, micro, and, and you're absolutely right. And so there's this moment in time now where organizations are, are looking up and say, I don't, I don't need AD, right? Like, but I need a directory. I need a modern directory, whether that's Jump Cloud or Azure or kind of anyone else. I need to be able to make sure that I can get into my stuff no matter where I am. Like that right. is the, the basic fundamentals there. And so now organizations are, are poking their head up and say, great, well, I can just migrate and go over to the Azure side and kind of loop into that. What's really interesting though, when you start to run that evaluation is you, it, you know, they're creating a little bit more of a walled garden because, hey, it works within this, we, but we make sure it works across all the other Microsoft products, which is great. And that's kind of what you want from within that. But then organizations now need to make a decision of, is that where I want to go? Is that where I'm going to be investing in the business in the next three to five years, kind of looking at those multi-year contracts? Or do I want to have a little bit more openness? Do I want to have a little bit more flexibility in where I go? Like I might make the decision later to, move from AWS to GCP. I might make the decision to move from Microsoft 365 to Workspace based on whatever that might be. And when you go down that Azure route, it's helpful in the fact that, you know, very similar to Jump Cloud, we're consolidating multiple different technologies to come to bear and making sure that you can leverage it. But, you know, there's always going to be a slant towards Microsoft products. Sure. And by being kind of truly agnostic, it allows organizations that flexibility. And so that's the biggest question that we're, we're finding folks is, do you want to go down that route? Great. Keep keep sending money to Richmond. But if you want to have other options, there are other options. Are other other options. Yeah. So is this what Jump Cloud's been talking about in terms of identity transformation? Is that the message essentially, or is, is there more to what you guys are um, you know, marketing as identity transformation? Give give me a little bit of that. Absolutely. And 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 we are. And and this we've been talking about it and kind of put put the name on it, right? And right. so it's this notion that there's this moment in time where you have to transform your identity as well. And this has been a long time coming, especially for folks that have been watching the cloud space and, you know, starting with digital transformation. Okay, we're going to get to our apps out there. And then cloud transformation. Okay, we're going to now move more of our workloads, more of our product base where we're actually generating revenue and making sure that that is stable and, and multi-region and all those things. But the last, you know, server to typically leave the closet is is identities because it's like oh, there's always this mental piece of, well, if I can see it, smell it, kind of see the server over there, it's going to be safe. But we need to migrate those identities now out into the cloud, and organizations everywhere got a taste of this during um, during the pandemic. But now there's all this lingering effect, especially as we have hybrid work where you know it's kind of a remote first, but in person preferred is now kind of where organizations are leaning back towards. And they need the technologies to make sure that they can do that. So it's this transformation of making sure that when you're migrating your identity, which is now the security perimeter, right? Yep. And so while we're talking on laptops and other pieces that um, you know should have hardening policies and all these other pieces, it's, it's me and what I can get access into. That is really the largest threat vector that we face. And so when you put that security hat on, that's the transformation that's getting a lot of attention right now, especially as you within the current macro environment, you know, there's a major hack now, I'd say, you know, major as in, you know, PR ending event, I'd say at least once a month now. Um, and that's really what's catching folks' mind. And so it's how we can migrate that. And, and people are forcing to make that decision 
faster than they thought, especially kind of within this environment of, but we still need to manage our security. We still need to make sure that people can get their jobs done. So you clearly touched indirectly, even without naming it, we touched on the fact that you do multi-cloud. I, you know, again, from our conversations, you obviously could do a hybrid environment, you could do on-premises. So you're covering the entire identity gambit, that's, that's clear. But what about like things? What about sensors, internet of things type of stuff? Does, does that apply to that as well? You know, that's a, that's an interesting question. Yeah, we actually, we don't touch IoT that much. Um, we do, you know, based on our agent, um, especially kind of the Linux based ones, you can, you can manage and kind of manipulate and making sure that, Hey, we can, we can do that. Um, but that is an area when we're thinking about our traditional IT setup, it's really around kind of folks making sure that, you know, I on one kind of one-to-one -one basis, I can get into those, those areas and access it. Whereas, IoT kind of whatever might be running in Arduinos, what within that mix, we don't have that kind of capability management. When you think about, great, now I'm also going to deploy a thousand sensors, um, thousand laptops, no problem, right? And and so that's just where we've been spending a lot of our product time and, and roadmap on, based on a lot of the customer feedback we've been getting. All right. So a two-prone question. Uh, one of them is selfishly, I'm going to ask it. The other one is, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the entire conversation that's going on today on cost cutting and cost optimization, all of that, especially as it relates to cloud. Mm -hmm. Now, with your solution, you are suggesting that organizations add another solution. So replace the identity that you have with Microsoft with another solution. How do you how do you tr sell this message in an environment where cost cutting is sort of the norm and where they already have a solution? It might not be modern, might not be new. Maybe it's got a lot of challenges today and I'll agree with that. But how are you finding customers receiving this message of, well, move away from what you already have in an enterprise agreement and use our solution. You know, it, it's an interesting move when you think about that and you're presented and you say, you know, is it truly apples to apples within that the area or, or within your per perspective? Like, is it additive? Do we have to add in Jump Cloud to now take advantage of all these things? And the answer is yes, and. Because when you add in Jump Cloud, we actually remove another four or five products out of that mix. And so what we're able to do because we're consolidating multiple different technologies, it's we will come in and replace your AD um, and kind of that, that core identity. But then we can also replace your MDM provider. We can also okay. replace your MFA provider. Um, we also manage SSO. So there's another area. Network access is another piece. So when you start to look at all of those elements that we provide in a consolidated platform, we're actually removing a lot of those different areas and costs. So even though, you know, this one light item might be larger than the stable, the total cost of ownership is declining drastically. And that's really kind of how we work with a lot of our clients and customers and say, look, like, let's just get a sense of what's in your stack now, right? What work was working for you? And another way to kind of flip that on its head too is instead of going, well, feature comparison all the way down the list, and because you even might have multiple overlaps within, you know, especially larger organizations where you're deploying sure. sometimes several different tools, right, to kind of accomplish that. And so like, there's that one angle, but then also too, when you have this consolidated approach, there's also removing a lot of the soft costs. And so that's an interesting, because then you're like, well, I don't need to log into five different places. I don't need to have a data trail across all that to figure out if I can pass my SOC 2 audit, you right. know, and kind of having some of those areas and being trained on one platform versus five also helps a lot of folks that are implementing this. So they don't have to, you know, e even product updates, certifications, kind of all of that mental bear that comes into it. And so there's this acceleration, not only from total cost of ownership decreasing, but then also your ability to execute and onboard and, and run these projects that very stressed out IT and security teams right, have right. to making sure that those are actually a reality. Um, and so it becomes more of a conversation of, you know, how, how important are those objectives? Can you achieve those faster? Can you achieve it with one platform versus five tools? And that's really kind of how we work with customers to decrease all of that cost within their organization. What about compatibility? Some of these applications, again, because of, you know, some, there's some old applications in the environments that 
have worked with Active Directory or at least need LDAP. So I guess what is the foundation of JumpCloud? Is it LDAP under under the sheets? How do you ensure compatibility with maybe legacy applications or even with modern applications? Do they have to support the open directory platform? Like how do you ensure compatibility? All of that. And so I'd say underneath the covers, and so everything that runs on JumpCloud is accessed through REST APIs. And then beneath that, we actually have a graph API that serves as you know our one-to-many connections, kind of understanding truly who's that source and then what are they associated to? What devices are they bound to? What, what groups and group access might they be able to take advantage of? And pulling those elements back into what you're able to do. And one of the very first days was LDAP was kind of our first protocol. And so JumpCloud actually leverages several different protocols to making sure that we work with all the things. So as soon as you create an account, we have our um, cloud LDAP. We also have cloud radius. And then for single sign-on, we're leveraging uh, multiple different protocols. So SAML 2.0 to authenticate SKIM as well to help with provisioning. So that way, from the onboarding perspective, that's even faster. OpenID Connect as well. And so when you're combining all of those different cloud protocols into one, then you can kind of help, you know, not only future-proof a little bit more where you're going, but then also help access, you know, what okay. you have today and, and kind of whether it's legacy applications, other pieces, um, you know, and, and there's a lot of different ways that we try to make the platform accessible to everyone and kind of, and by everyone, I'm also including the technologies and partners and integrations that we have available. So is your solution geared only towards large enterprise, large business? For example, um, you know, one of the things I, I bring up on, on the show a lot is my dad owns a bakery, a restaurant, and now kind of a m small manufacturing facility. So it's a small mm -hmm. business Let's call it, uh, you know, less than than three hundred employees. Is the but there's a lot of systems. There's a lot of stuff that they need access to. Even as a small organization, again, if I sit here and, and list out all of the things that I'm trying to help them with, it's it's mind boggling how much they have from the POS system to the inventory system, the accounting system, the payroll. I mean, there's just a ton. So, is a solution like Jump Club? accessible, affordable to small businesses, or is it primarily geared towards large enterprise? We're That's actually, really, question. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're actually geared much more towards small, medium enterprises. And right. I'd say that kind of coming back to the, the Microsoft analogy as well, it, that's where they're spending all their time. We're going to hang out with the, you know, the, the Fortune 100 and have sit down with dinners and you know all the other pieces where we're really providing a backbone support for small, medium organizations. And so like the scenario you just described is like, great, that's perfect. And actually I would put them within a multi-tenant portal within Jump Cloud. So you have all those distinct operations, but you can manage all three organizations you know, collectively when you're looking at all those different pieces. And that's another area too that we actually leveraged. And so we support uh, managed service providers as well that, you know, if you're not doing your own IT, you might be calling on someone else to help manage within that small business environment. And that's really where we are set up for success, where it's a lot of folks that, you know, hey, I want to start something or I'm a fast growing startup. My first phone call isn't to call Microsoft and put in a server and, and kind of start that. It really, it's, you know, hey, I put in a credit card to, to Google Workspaces, now I'm up on AWS, now I'm kind of all, all over these places and I just need a place to manage that. That's where Jump Cloud fits in beautifully because we're able to support all those existing technologies now, but then as you grow and either you know add more businesses to kind of the family empire right. or as those individuals grow, then we're able to, to support that. That's fascinating. That's awesome. I, I, I really enjoy hearing that uh, because I, I feel like small businesses are sometimes um, overlooked and I don't blame organizations that do that. They're, it's difficult to deal with smaller organizations, but they have a lot of the same challenges that the large organizations have um, and sometimes with no solutions. So that's that's really good to hear. Now, in your role, you, your title is a principal strategist. So you talk a lot to customers. What are you hearing? What is front and center, top of mind uh, for IT leaders, for tech professionals these days? I know the cost conversation, whether it's cost optimization, you know, cost cutting, all of that is happening. But what else are you hearing? Is it primarily security and identity focused? Is it all of the above? Give me your give me your sense, your take on it. It is, and I I would say more specifically security because it it, it pops in the newsreel. It's um, I'd say 
it's also relation. Like everyone has an element that they're able to identify that within, regardless of what your role is, right? right. So if, if you're the CISO, obviously you're, you're looking at it, but even if you're coming brand new into the organization as, as a marketing intern, right? That you, you're still seeing all those different elements and the way that you have to access those resources is very similar. Within that now it's okay. There's, there's some additional pressure because things are moving so quickly in the macro environment people are dispersed more than ever, right? And so you have a, a whole, I'd say, working generation now that's trying to figure out how to work from home and what does this look yep. like and, and all those different elements. And security is front and center because you can't, you know, that you don't have, I'd say, the the mental luxury of saying, okay, every, everyone's here in the office or at least these offices. And that's typically how that model was brought to bear. However, now within a lot of customers we're talking to, it's, it's security, specifically device security, because it is like, that's a, typically the only piece of equipment folks might have, right? And, you know, this is the only you know laptop I'm running off of right now, and this is my access point. And so, making sure that we can treat that device truly as a secure gateway into all the different resources that I need, but then also thinking about what are those conditions that need to be accessed? Like, do I need to challenge for MFA on certain applications? Is it a trusted device? Is it out of network? All of those different pieces. That's really where people are spending a lot of time and effort to making sure that people are safe out there in the wilderness. Then kind of, I'd say, you know, tier two or kind of right around that is we're seeing a lot of folks that are either going after compliance certificates so they can say, Hey, Hey, we're a trusted vendor as well. They want to help win business and grow their own revenue stream. So they want to show that they're secure. Um, or another element of that is actually just going after cyber insurance. And so that's another piece that a lot of people are trying to go. And it's like, how, how do I validate this? Right. And you know, what is, What's the equivalent of my, you know, progressive snapshot or something like that for my organization to show that I'm up to snuff from a security perspective? And it's those baselines that I think are keeping a lot of folks up at night, in addition to, um, I'd say, traditional P&L responsibilities, making sure that the organization is moving. But that is now the biggest like existential threat to a lot of organizations is not just competition, but oh, <laughs> the entire security perimeter now is after me too. So how can I at least make sure that I have a good baseline um, that we're able to run off and grow from? So that, that's fascinating to me because I, I did uh, a lot of work on uh, cyber risk insurance. I did a podcast with uh, some insurance companies and even with Google Cloud. Google Cloud is fascinating in that regard because they're, they have a dashboard from within Google Cloud where you can begin that process and they're also... Um, they're also offering information to the, uh, the underwriters about the environment to kind of facilitate, to modernize the process of cyber risk insurance. So is Jump Cloud doing something similar? Is there a specific report, maybe a dashboard, a score that customers can leverage if they're, if they're going through some kind of an underwriting process for cyber risk insurance? We do. And so I guess there's a couple different ways that we can help out in that area. Because when you're thinking about cyber risk, it's like, what are the policies that you have put in place? And so mm. within Jump Cloud, we can show you, say, yes, MFA has been implemented, or these these users are bound to these devices, and those devices are hardened in the sense where there's certain policies enacted on them, or we know that they're being patched frequently, or we know that at least the browser on that device as well is being updated and patched. So kind of that sequence of events that we're able to demonstrate to customers, say, look, you, you are a secure customer, or you've implemented at least kind of some of these baseline policies. We don't go so far as you can, you know, hey, you're, you're zero out of 70 or, you know, wherever you are within that range, because, but what we do is actually work with those underwriters and in, in, um, cyber insurance organizations to help provide that. And that's actually, you know, it's on some of our, our alliances work that we're doing right now is actually working with a lot of those folks. So that way, hey, just leverage Jump Cloud APIs. Because if you're able to use that, then you can also go directly into those interfaces and say, yep, hey, my fleet is 60% secure and has full disk encryption on these devices or um, these you know, elements of Mac devices haven't been updated past, you know, you know we want to get done to Ventura eventually, right? And, and so all those different pieces we're able to highlight and making sure that that process is a little bit more seamless when you're going through it. 
That's fascinating. So, I mean, I love the idea that you're at least talking about cyber risk insurance, educating your customers about the, how important that is, helping them, especially with the underwriting process, uh, being that third party kind of that, uh, that can do that. That's fascinating. So I'm, I'm out of time, but I'm intrigued. We will have to bring you back. Maybe we'll bring uh, some subject matter expert with you next time. And I'd love to see a demo of, of Jump Cloud, maybe the interface and how easy it would be uh, to enroll users, maybe even to replace Active Directory, those types of things. Maybe, maybe we'll do a geek out session uh, next time if you're uh, if you're open to it. That would be great. And I guess one thing to say for you know folks that are listening, and and part of how the organization is built over time is the product led growth organization. So everything I've just talked about is is free up to ten users. Because when you think about just that process, right? Of what does it look like within my environment? How do I onboard users? You know, how, what is what does the device management capabilities look like? Each one of those are projects within themselves. And so we don't have a set tile, you know, time trial or kind of anything else like that. So you can play with it. You can get dirty, like, you know, coming back to um, previous small examples, right? We actually have a lot of people that implement Jump Cloud just for their home. So they have a radius server for free, you know, and so there's some cool stuff that you're able to leverage and play around with. And so I'd absolutely love to to dive in and geek out with you. Actually, I'm going to take you up on that. I that's a great that's a great point. I should have asked. I didn't, but um, I will definitely um, sign up for it, and I will do a video, folks, on um, what the process was like for my dad's stuff. And you know, ten. I mean, I'll start with ten and see uh, see what happens there. But uh, that's interesting. That's a very good point. And it doesn't. It's not uh, time bound, right? So you have ten users forever. Forever. That's that's the fun part. And so cool. you're able to play with it and explore. And like I said, it, it's great for even, you know, tiny organizations that are, are starting. And that was actually one of our founders mm. beliefs as well is that's that's when it's most critical. Right. When you only have a few folks and, and a strong idea and you want to make sure but that you also want to make sure that when you're doing it, you're doing it in a secure way. And so if you can start a company in a secure way, then you can grow it to be even more secure over time. Well, folks, you heard it here. Uh, I'm going to uh, establish that account. I'm going to try to get us off of uh, a domain controller or a domain in general. And I'm going to document the entire process of how easy or not it was and <laughs> some of the benefits of, of Jump Cloud. So, Chase, this was a fascinating, fascinating conversation. I, uh, I learned a ton about Jump Cloud. Super interesting. Thank you so much for making time to come on the show today. Of course. And thank you again for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we're going to have to do a part two. Stay tuned, everyone. I'm That's also okay. going to do a bunch of other videos, but we're going to do a part two with you and um, see how this works for large organizations. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. Perfect. Thank you so All much. Right. Take care now.